Healthy Lifestyle Design is a part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Healthy Lifestyle Design, a mom and daughter podcast. I'm Pamela Heichel, and I will be joined soon by my mother and co-host, Janet Heichel. On the show, we share our passion for a healthy lifestyle and what has worked best for us and what we are still exploring. We are constantly educating ourselves and talking to each other about the body, mind, and soul and how they're all interconnected. So we thought, why not share our journey with you? Today's episode is all about the adrenals. And of course, we're not experts. So we approach this talk topic about talking about where the adrenals are, what they are in charge of, and what are some symptoms or signs that there might be some dysfunction or areas in your life that you may want to address. And what really came out of this conversation was my mother and I talking about how important it is to do a regular assessment of where you are with your health and wellness, how you feel, and what does life look like and feel like right now? Because let's be honest, everything is constantly changing. How we feel, the world around us, our inner world, families, friends, uh, the work that we do, everything is always changing. So not unlike the seasons, why not do a self-assessment every quarter, every four months, or every three months, sorry. Take a look at how you feel in some of the areas that you may need to tweak to to obtain homeostasis, which is really what we're all after. Now, before we begin, let's listen to our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Taproot Spotlight, a service that helps businesses and organizations pay attention to the people they serve. Taproot tells you the news about the people and companies that are important to you. Use that information internally to keep everyone on the same page or Share it with the world in your newsletter, on your website, and on your social media channels. Paying attention pays dividends. Find out more at taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. That's taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. Edmonton Community Foundation acts as a bridge between donors and charities to create a strong, vibrant community for generations to come. You can start an endowment fund yourself or with a group. Once it reaches $10,000, it can start distributing funds. Vital Signs is an annual checkup conducted by Edmonton Community Foundation in partnership with Edmonton Social Planning Council to measure how the community is doing. This year's focus is on making ends meet in Edmonton. Learn more at ecfoundation.org. That's ecfoundation.org. And finally, check out more podcasts in the Alberta Podcast Network. Mess Hall Podcast is one that I listen to. Join hosts Avery and Lena Cochran and sometimes guests as they sample, write, and talk about fun foods. History and facts are discussed from treats such as flavored Oreos to pumpkin spice to types of box dressing. Listen to an amusing debate about the assessment of a different food theme each week. This couple may not always agree, but they will for sure ridicule each other for not seeing eye to eye. Listen weekly to hear delightful banter about yummy foods. Check them out at messhallpodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right, folks, that's all I got. Let's get to it. Well, hello there, JPs. Hi, Pam. How are you today? What, did I catch you? No, you didn't catch me, but I have to laugh because you keep calling me JP. Well, I've been calling oh, you that. JP, three. and you, you know, it's, every time we come on here, it's a different name for me. <laughs> I like to keep things interesting and keep people on their toes. My and, name and is Janet, guessing. by the way. JP? JP. Or PL. For me. Or PL for you, Or yes. PH. No, PL. PL. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Um, okay. I am exhausted, which is great for the topic that we're speaking about. But before we get into that, let's check in. 
Yes. How are you doing? What's up? What's new? What's annoying you? Oh, uh, you know, I'm doing fine. I'm just waiting for the sun to come out and the grass to turn green and to quit snowing every so often and wreck my clean car that I keep washing all the time. And uh, other than that, I'm doing fine. Looking after my sister who had her hip replacement and taking yes. her to physio. She's progressing quite well. That's lovely. That's really and, great um, to hear. You know, just been going, going, going here and there and trying maybe not to go as much because the gas prices are unbelievable. But, you know, I have to get somewhere, so whatever. And you? Um, me? Um, things are great. Business is great relationships and friendships and family and and all of that is great i too love the sunshine i find it incredible that uh, you know once we get that full day of sunshine how it literally does cast away all of the grayness and our worries and um it makes us feel more energized but because of where i live it's also a welcome for the jerks to Dude. yes with oh mom last night was a gong show and then i recall because i got together with a girlfriend of mine who lives downtown that the convoy was yet again protesting was at it? the le ledge oh. downtown and so i know that there was some crossover onto the avenue oh. and like she had mentioned too because of where i live is where a lot of the bars and entertainment are located so we've got the 18 year olds the 19 year olds and the 20 year olds who um are making up for lost time and also um, because of friends that I have that work in the industry are deciding to school them on the proper etiquettes of tipping your bartender folks <laughs> can you please like we know you you are new to this and you're delayed tip your bartenders because you too will have a job in the hospitality yep. one day and um and you'll be complaining the yeah. same thing that you serve these people and they sit all night and they don't give you any tips i've heard that of course yes and, and so then it was loud with vehicles like inappropriate jacked up illegal vehicles on the avenue and then there was some female sobbing after Aww. hours the drama from coming out of the bars etc well, even though that I live off Jasper, maybe a block or so, but they must park their vehicles around when they go to oh, the cabin or sure. to the thing because it's usually parked. So Jasper is downtown town. for Janet, yeah. So, and then I usually have my bedroom with window open that much and it's um, a little bit. I have it open, not quite, but just a little bit and it, it's on the street so they're all parked there. But they must be, because I always check <laughs> the time, they must come out of the bar and they had a few too many so of there's course. always yelling and screaming and fighting, you yeah. know, among the couples or swearing or sobbing and it's just like, and then they get into the vehicle and then they turn the music right up and the window's open and then they sit there for a long time. La, 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 la. But anyway, that's enough. And that interrupts my sleep. Oh, I know. I know. So, and I'm also, um, as we segue soon into our topic, I mean, uh, I'll be 48 in May. And it's really hard to gauge my perimenopausal symptoms during a pandemic. Because you don't know no. yeah. which is what. But I will tell you that I'm waking up in the middle of the night more frequently. Not to go to the washroom or anything. I'm just waking up. And I normally, I don't really have a problem going back to sleep, but it's still that broken sleep. And I'm telling you, mom, I know we work out and we walk. And yes, I need to roll out the muscles more and stretch, but my body aches. Like, does it ache from the workout or is it just aching from? Well, yeah. Every aching. day, like when I get up, it's going to be my low back that hurts, so it's hard to straighten up, but eventually I do. You know, I you know, think what what's happening, too. Is I, adrenal I, fatigue, Mom? Yeah. Am I suffering? I, I'm not, I don't know what you're suffering from, Pam, but I think it's during the day when we don't take care of ourselves. If we sit too long, if we sit hump, if we yeah. do this, and then you rest. And, of course, I know we're talking to a Miles, a physio that's doing my sister's uh, hip he was saying that's normal in the evening uh when you lay and still everything relaxes everything's going to start to hurt yeah because she was complaining why at night time my hip is really killing me during mm -hmm. the day i can do this and he's saying because and it's just the same right. thing with my arm uh, right. during the day i do this and i don't pay attention to the pain right. if it's there and at night when your body relaxes the blood goes into it and then the pain starts to come. It starts to yeah. throb. Yeah. And, yeah, and then when you get up in the morning and you move around a little bit, you're fine. Yeah, and we should be doing those Qigong exercises again that just helps to bring blood flow and oh, awareness yeah. and some nice gentle stretching and stuff. And 
Yeah, I, I know that there's, I mean, I think we're always in motion and being mindful and conscious about, you know, our day to day and, and having to adjust things. So we're taking the best possible care of ourselves. And, and I know because now that the it's daylight longer that I'm becoming a little bit more active and I may be, um, maybe neglecting my sleep a little bit because I just want to be out and oh. out and do things, you know? I, I know what you're saying because I'm yeah. like that too. I keep looking out the window. I said, well, I'm not going to bed now because it's still a daylight out. I know. You know, so let's just enjoy it, especially if it's nice. I mean, yeah. it was beautiful this morning when we were out and the wind picked up. Yes. But I think it's died down now. Oh, no, it's beautiful. And then my girlfriend, um, Jody, that I got together with this afternoon, she's now instituted a Saturday afternoon nap. And I said, you know what? I think maybe for the next little while, like after our walks on Sunday, I'm not going to schedule anything so I can actually go home and, and rest. I wish I could do that, Pam, but once I hit the sack, I might not wake up and then my day's wrecked. I'm one of those kind of... Yeah, but sm- once a week. Well, yeah, I don't like that because then I Well, I do. I can't. You know, if, Because if, to me, sleeping is productivity. It, you know, the thing is, if I could, I know people who can just lay down for 20 minutes, have a power nap, and they get up. It's just like, whoa, not me. No, uh, I would, I don't know. My nap is going to be one to one and a half hours. Thank well, you very much. by that time, it'd probably be four no. hours for me. It's not that I'm lacking sleep, but for some reason, you know, especially after you walk, you're exhausted. Yeah. There, there's, there's, a, there's a lot that we as humans um, are transitioning and moving through not only the seasonal changes, which is quite exhausting, right? But also just what's going on, like still, still the pandemic, like there's still a pandemic folks. And I will be the first one to say here on the podcast that because I got um, COVID on December 25th of 2021, I was still going to get my booster. I have only had two vaccines, but I think I should go and get my, my booster now mm-hmm. because um, it's, it's, very mu- it's very much out there. And it's, it's, there's another variant they're saying yeah. that's coming out there. I'm, you know, I'm, be, I'm still being careful because I have no clue what's going on. Yeah, I know. You know, but so anyway. So anyway, our topic that you wanted to talk about is... Adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue. And you know what? When I saw that, sorry, Pam, but when I saw that, I thought of you. I'm going, oh my God, Pam's always saying she's tired, tired. And I said, okay, let's discuss this. But as I was reading through it, I said, okay, well, that's not really. It's a different type because yeah. Pam's only getting five hours of yeah. sleep. Yeah, so I'm going, okay, that's not exactly what she has. But I did not know that these uh, adrenal uh, glands, glands sit on top of your kidneys. They do. They do. Um, So I just wanted to go ahead and let's just set this up because this is not an excuse because I have too much on the go and I forget to (laughs) research our topics, but you do. And I like to come in with little to no information because I find it interesting. But you know most of the uh, topics. Sure. But I find it interesting. Being a health coach, you're sure you knew half of the stuff anyway. So adrenal glands, they're also known as suprarenal glands. There's the small triangular shaped glands located on top of both kidneys, like we talked about. And adrenal glands produce hormones that help regulate your metabolism, your immune system, your blood pressure, your response to stress and other essential functions. Um, there's, there's a great link from the Johns Hopkins medicine website that talks about it. Uh, they are composed of two parts. You have the cortex and the medulla, which are each responsible for producing different hormones. When the adrenal glands don't produce enough hormones, this can lead to adrenal insufficiency like Addison's disease. Okay. Right. Yes. Adrenal glands may develop nodules that can be benign or malignant, which can potentially produce excessive amounts of certain hormones, leading to various health issues. Um, What else do we want to know to set this up? Uh, The hormones, does it talk about cortisol? Cortisol is one of the hormones. Um... See, oh, I see. I, I, I think. See, the adrenal glands work in tandem with the hypothalamus. Yes. In, in the brain. 
and the pituitary, pituitary, pituitary gland. gland. The pituitary gland. And yeah. these three are often referred to as the P HPA axis. The HPA axis, um, which, so it, it's, they're intimately involved with our stress response, digestive and immune systems and overall metabolism. And when you go to, I hate that we're gonna go here, or I'm gonna go here. Yeah. When you go to other health and wellness or alternative type therapies, um, this is what a lot of acupuncturists will address is the the um, HPA access access oh, sorry okay. access right because they're all interrelated it's the whole um, mind body it's the whole um, brain and gut relationship it's like a Morse code they say they ping back and forth among that's all right three of them. yeah I did not know that Pam. yeah so just... that's right no 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 so it, it's interesting because um, as the pandemic came and happening and we're going through it we saw a lot of revelations and evolutions amongst the the science and health and wellness community right right and we you and I read that lovely book food is not medicine by dr. Joshua uh, oh shoot Ulrich uh, Ulbrich? no you just made that up no I didn't I'm yeah just... <laughs> I totally forgot his name he's from the UK terrible terrible but you're going to have the majority of the medical science community, you know, you will hear a lot about adrenal fatigue. And they will call that BS. There's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. Yeah. And I was actually thinking about it, Mom, when I was driving back home this afternoon. And, you know, one of the biggest arguments that you hear from the health and wellness alternative yoga type um, industry is... Modern science or modern medicine just treats the symptoms. They don't treat the root cause. And I thought, well, that's kind of what you people address, though, too, when you go to a functional doctor or what have you, or even an acupuncturist. They're whipping up all these herbs and medicines to support the kidneys, to support the adrenals, when I thought we are supposed to be addressing the, the whole the whole body as a whole, right? And so anyway, um, you found this great article. What is it called? Okay, <laughs> did I put you on the spot? Is adrenal fatigue a real thing? Okay, that's what the article. So is. then you read this article, and what did you discover? Well, it just exactly what you just said. The whole really? article was yeah, it's just a made up term that most of our uh, health and wellness. Uh, gurus or mm. people use that uh, as a term for because they have no other way of expressing this so they're saying it's adrenal fatigue and then they from there like you said they try to uh, see what they with the herbs or whatever methods they use right try to see if they can um, help you right but it's really not that it's not there's no such thing it's just a made-up name Okay, and so then what else did you, what was your own thinking behind this whole topic? Well, nothing. I, first of all, I, when I saw this topic, I was thinking of you because you told me you're always so tired that one day you couldn't do anything. And oh, I thought, oh, yeah. adrenal fatigue, maybe Pam has that. And then when I started reading, as I was telling you, yeah. I started reading, no, it's not that. It's just a name for something else. But with that, because we're, and I think why we're fatigued and we use that name, or right. I don't use it, but whoever uses it, we're also stressed out. It's stress upon stress. We mm. never give ourselves time, like they were saying, for a body to uh, re generate, generate yeah, to and get rest. back, rest, get back to normal. We're just piling stuff, piling yeah. stuff, piling stuff, and the stress keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. So we're on this, like this uh, little uh, um, hamster, wheel. hamster wheel that keeps going round and round. Yeah. Janet's doing charades, just so you know, okay, and well, that's how I'm helping her <laughs> fill in the blanks. Well, you know, when I was in the BS um, health coach industry, which wasn't very long, but um, you kind of came on that ride with me. And anyway, that's a whole other topic. Um, what I always talk to, you know, you or friends or myself or clients or potential clients, it was always about homeostasis, which is you know, what we're always striving for or trying to maintain. And you see it in nature too, right? And that is just to have that, that, to find that sweet spot for yourself, to find that balance, to build in routines, 
to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you, to be mindful of when you need support, when you need to rest, when you need to say no, when too much is too much. There you go. That's right? exactly what it is. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, if you are working 40 to 50 plus hours or more a week, and you're also a parent or a caregiver, and also you are doing other, you know, um, activities or hobbies or what have you, and you're also engaging in real high impact, high stress, like workouts, for example, and you don't get enough nutrients and you're always exhausted and you're only getting five hours of sleep. I mean, that's not adrenal fatigue. That's called you're doing a little bit too much. Yes, you, 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 exactly what you said, Pam. There's just There was just no time for you to rest and reset. Right. Like, we're not health experts. We're not doctors. No, no. We're just having an open, honest but, but, conversation. But it's, it's from my own experience, and I guess yeah. from you too, and I can just see that. I mean, you're, if you're on the go steady, and we've just been mentioning this too, you have to reset yourself. And also, uh, food. Yeah. Is, is your diet is very very important because you have to feed uh, your cor cor uh, cortisol level right. it keeps piling up piling up and, but then you need to eat a lot of healthy food and they said mostly protein right to bring it down and not only that but you need to you need to eat to fuel your, eat your body healthy though you need yeah. a healthy diet and that's what we're lacking too with that well, I think with, uh, let's, I, I like to clarify what I think we mean by healthy, and that's a diverse diet with fruits and vegetables and whole grains and pulses and legumes and oh, meat yes. and eggs and dairy, like a wide variety, right, of possibly freshly prepared food, not deep fried food, not pro, not a lot of processed food or, you know, items like that. So, yeah, it, it's really interesting because, so... According to some of these articles, when people talk of adrenal dysfunction, right? So I, I think that's better than to say fatigued because then couldn't one argue that my heart's fatigued, my lungs are fatigued, my liver is fatigued, my stomach is fatigued because it's going on 40 years of operating. It's fatigued. Well, no, maybe there's a dysfunction because there is some... Um, there's some areas in your lifestyle that are just not supportive anymore, right? So people would talk about like fatigue, difficulty waking up in the morning, sugar craving, salt cravings, weight gain, especially in the midsection, disrupted sleep, brain fog, lowered immunity, depression, and anxiety. I mean, yeah, that is all mine, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, but then it says here, although the symptoms above are common, they're certainly not normal. And these symptoms pop up often in those struggling to optimize their cortisol levels. Um, I, I just think, like, I think this can be really dangerous, right? Where you start to look at these disorders or dysfunctions or these articles, and then you start to diagnose yourself, right? But uh, one of the main hormones, like you said, which is a stress hormone, is cortisol. And you were even talking about how you need to go to your doctor to get some blood work done and you were going to request a cortisol test. Well, why not, right? And then we can come back and report to you. Because the function of cortisol, like stress, stress is good. Exactly. It, yes. It's not bad and it's necessary and you're not going to get rid of any stress, right? But upon waking up normally, your body will, will secrete... Um, a certain amount of cortisol to literally put a pep in your step. Well, that is exactly what it is, yes. Right? But then throughout your day, your cortisol levels begin to um, lower down to help prepare you to retire and relax and sleep at night. But what's happening is, and we, you and I talked about this a lot over the last you know, 10, 15 years, is chronic low-level stress. So it's like there's this constant hum underneath the surface that is not being addressed and it's being ignored right and there is no way for it to find homeostasis because you're continually lacking sleep and you know you're drinking that wine every single night and you are taking on too much at work and you're worrying constantly about your finances and then just 
it everything did. accumulates, yeah. right? Yes. And so you're buzzing on, and, and you're jacked up on way too much um, cortisol. And then so it becomes, then your body is working a little bit extra to try to, you know, get rid of. But and, and the problem is sometimes it yeah. never does. So when it's it nighttime comes, there you go. There's right. your sleep. You can, can't sleep because you're still in that high. I'm using that high um, feeling of the levels yeah. of cortisol. Yeah, like it's got you wide awake and wired, right? So there was uh, there was as well too. I uh, how to um, seven steps to improve. Well, that's the article that I have. Oh, like, is it? It goes into a little BS in the beginning, like um, my root cause. This was from a, a health coach. Um, oh yeah, that's him. Yeah, um, most often it comes to down to unmanaged stress, chronic inflammation, and inadequate rest and recovery. And I think it's probably safe to say if you are conscious and living during this pandemic in a Western capitalistic society, um, you're you're probably experiencing a lot of these symptoms. I, I think yeah, at this right? time right now, most of us were totally. Through that. But if you scroll down there, you have seven steps. Yeah, oh. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's where I'm oh, going. Where but I going. just wanted to. I know, folks. We're all over the place, and plus, there's motorbikes outside. I'm a little on edge. So here, so if you think if you have a lot of these symptoms, um, or or you're just experiencing these things in your body, and it, it's chronic because it's every day and for a long period of time. Maybe it's something you'd like to address. And so they recommend the first thing to do is get some lab work done, right? I, that's something I, I wasn't aware of. Would oh, you? yeah. Oh, you can get, I didn't yeah. know you could get your cortisol. Yeah, you can test it and to see. And, and I know, like, um, I think it depends on your doctor or what level they're willing to allow you to get tested because... If it's expensive. Well, and if you have a jerk doctor, they're going to look at you and say, Janet, it's medically unnecessary for you to get your cortisol tested, right? Um, because that's because we have free health care. Now, if you're willing to pay, you can get any test done that you want, right? But I think typically it's at least a two-parter. Because they need to test in at a morning. certain time yeah. in the morning, and then they need to test later in the afternoon or evening, or however that works, or over yeah. a couple of days. I, I didn't or what do any uh, exploring on the testing, but I uh, yeah. suggested one of the things to. Uh, well, I think uh, why they suggested that, Pam, is if uh, you're really uh, having problems. Yes. Really problems. You just yeah. can't, like, the, 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 that you read, if you're fatigued, if you're dizzy, if you're all of that. So it's best to yeah. get tested. And the weight that. gain in certain areas, yeah. like midsection mostly. Yeah, where you have no idea as to why this is yeah. happening. See, and another thing they were saying as well, too, and it's it's your it lowers your metabolism. So they yeah. said sometimes when you work out, uh, doesn't matter what you, you do. do, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to lose anything yeah. or you're not going to get. And I, I read something else in there. So if you're metabolism is low maybe you don't have to work out as intense well so here's the thing and again not an expert but if we try to logically think this out if you have a high level of cortisol coursing through your body which is a stress hormone that's signaling to the brain and the body that there is danger sure. yes right yes and so you're going to be on high alert so the digestive system is going to shut down and blood is going to be diverted to your extremities to your legs and your arms and this is where you can find a lot of women who are having fertility issues as well. So when you're in this high stress chronic state, the body from a very survival point of view is like, we're not getting pregnant. There is no way you could get pregnant and sustain and survive and take care of a baby if you are in danger. Oh, he's in the flight. And fight. Right? And you're not going to be intaking food because you're running for your life. And to digest food takes a lot of energy. Right now, I know for myself, when I'm stressed, I eat. That creates a whole lot of issues cramping, bloating, gas, indigestion because you're not at a calm and rested state for your body to focus on digesting. Very good, Capiche, yes, yes, right? Yeah, so then, um, oh, so what was the thing that you brought up that I oh, so then. So then now your body thinks it's in survival mode. And so what is it going to hold on to to survive? Because you're on the 
oops, I was about to use the F-bomb, because you're on the run. You gotta hold on to fat. It needs energy, it Genius. needs storage of energy, of fuel. So it's gonna hold on to it. So then you don't know what you're doing to yourself and you think you're gaining all of this weight. And so whether you or um, a healthcare practitioner tells you you need to get more exercise. So now you're exercising, walking would be fantastic because that can actually lower your cortisol levels because it's very mindful and it's soothing for the yes. body, right? It relieves the stress. But if you're gonna go and do high cardio, high impact swimming would be great too high impact well then now you're just even alerting the body even more that you're running from a t-rex and you know what i'm thinking just mentioning that Pam, yeah. uh, especially when you're in that uh, disposition and going to uh, wanting to exercise because yeah. you you're you're already exhausted you're already exhausted so you're not going to gain anything very that's a, that's a great explanation well, well so so just imagine being so incredibly exhausted and trying to push a, a like a, a, a huge rock up a steep hill. Oh, the rock's going to turn around and roll right over you, my well, dear. Well, you know, like you're yes. not going to get anywhere, anywhere no. at all. And and so I, I think rather than say, oh, you need acupuncture, you need to do this. And, and quite possibly it could be lovely. It could feel really nice. It could be great. Everyone's different. You're Everyone's right. different. Get the lab work done first if you feel that this is a real chronic issue. And again, most practitioners um, will classify something as chronic or debilitating if it starts to interfere in your everyday functioning of life. Yeah. Right? So when we talk about like addictions and food dis eating disorders, food disorders, etc., this is when you need support. But if you think that you're not feeling your best, maybe I could clean up my life a little bit and help the body out to help you get the lab work done. And, and, uh, and I think that's great because then yeah. it would relieve your, your mind. You know, you know, true, true. you know, you know exactly where you're starting and what the problem right. is. So you could start. From so there. you're not like Pamela coming to her mother every second day <laughs> saying that I'm dying of something. <laughs> okay. Right? Uh, number two was to make sleep a priority. <sighs> Man, you know what? See, the, this the is easiest, the thing. yet the most difficult thing. Yeah. So that's why I think you said uh, lab work first. So you know where you're at where you're at so where yeah. you could go there and then I think most of the time when you get the lab work and then you know what's happening you're, you're more relaxed isn't that how we all find if we know exactly yeah. what we're going after I know I think so too with everything in life yeah. Yes. and I find this sleep one interesting like this person that wrote the article is talking about their own personal experience and they said here they were lucky enough to have a boss who helped to change his schedule so it was more conducive for sleep um, and so he prioritized 10 hours of sleep at night and non-negotiable. And I mean, wouldn't that be lovely? But I'm even thinking of myself, you know, um, over a year ago, I was going to really tackle that sleep thing, but then something changed in my life. Right. Anyway, um, in, in a good way. But if you need to improve your sleep, which is most likely more hours, that means you have to take a real hard look at what your days look like and you need to make some lifestyle changes. You, you really do. You, you do, especially if you're on a scheduled uh, time as you have to be at work at 8 o'clock. If you go to bed at 1, 2 o'clock, there's, there's just no way. People who are self-employed, you can sort of swing that a little bit. If you, you get to you bed could, late and, but I think it can be a little bit dangerous because too, then yes. you're off of a routine, yeah. right? Like the, the root, if, you know, that's one of the many things that I learned from you is just how necessary and beneficial routine is. Like your body, like that is orgasmic to the body, is having a routine to know, right? Yeah. So, you know. And, and the body knows when you're, when you throw yourself off the routine, mm. it just throws everything it off. It does. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's a well-oiled machine. So if you know that you have to get up at a certain time, work your way backward. And I say play with seven to ten hours of sleep like find which one is most suitable for you nine is actually my sweet spot uh, eight is mine yeah um and then and i'm talking like about this for myself so when you think well that means i have to get to bed at this time and why can't couldn't i in the past what was i doing that i could do maybe at a different time well, i was just on my phone and watching tv Right. right, exactly what they said. You, um, yeah. you binge watch a series, yeah, and on your phone watch the news feeds, play games, yes. chat, you know, whatever it is. 
Um, and not to say that you can't do that, but maybe schedule it then, right? Be strict with yourself and say, no, I'm allowed to enjoy some of these things. They don't need to be evil. I, I derive great pleasure from it. And so I'm going to, this is the time where I come home. This is the time where I eat. This is the time where I do some a little bit of things around the house. This is the, my my downtime, and this is when I start to get ready for bed. And, and you know what, Pam? That's great. Yeah. Um, a lot of us um, in this 21st century are spoiled with all the gadgets. I know. So we put TVs in our bedrooms. We have all the phones oh, and all I am, the laptops. I'm still, I am still against TVs in bedrooms. I don't have a TV no. in my bedroom either. But Didn't this is, you try once and you were like, screw that? Well, yeah, because I mean, I would once I'm laying in bed watching TV, I'm sleeping. Anyway, anyway, right? yeah. so anyway, so the TV is gone, but I mean, with our phones and our gadgets, they all come into the bedroom with us, and I think this is what's happening. So we're screwing ourselves up, even though we go, we're saying, well, I am in bed at nine o'clock every night. What's the thing? Well, how long are you on your phone before exactly. you get to sleep? At least two hours. And then the bed. phone dings. If you have it beside you, you're yeah. on it again. Yeah, no, you have to set notifications. Now, if you have a partner in your life that is on a different schedule, I mean, I certainly don't know what the solution is, but if you're a light sleeper like I am, then that is where um, separate bedrooms is probably comes in really, really handy. Yeah, but if, it, if you're a night shift and a day shift, so when the night shift comes in, the no, day sh I'm, I'm, well, yeah, I'm yes, but I don't even mean extreme schedules, schedules like that. Okay. Like I am annoyingly a super light sleeper, super light. And I get really anxious when there is another human being that is disrupting my Zen time. I think we all are like that. I don't know. No, not all of us. No, there's some people that are really well, laid you know, back and lovely, and I admire yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's why. Um, did you what our sleep um, bedding beds are coming out with? I mean, you can get the king or the queen, but they're separated. So when you lay down, you won't hear the next person right. beside you. There's all kinds of things. Yeah, now. there are things. I think it's a conversation. If you have a partner and yeah. you don't share a bedtime routine then that needs to be um, a conversation for sure, for sure. Right. Okay, next, after sleep. Focus on low intensity and restorative exercise. Yes, walking is number one. Yeah. Swimming or any kind of like, like you know, aqua size or treading water. Swimming, I think, is great. So like, yeah, like a light a bike ride, a yeah. yoga. Yoga is fantastic. You know, and, and also it says, like, slow down in your strength training. Okay. Fewer repetitions instead of right longer. And take longer rest periods between each session. Yeah, yeah. You know, instead of going gung whole hundred of them push-ups or something and then... Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. Right? It's true. I think that one's pretty, pretty. Um, and I will say that if you're like, well, I don't know how to focus on low intensity and restorative exercise because I don't exercise, then please start with some walking. Walking's an exercise. Yeah, it's and a, a movement, and, any kind of movement. Yeah. The fourth one, increase your protein and fat intake. So this person said they shifted to a nutrition plan that was 40% protein, 40% fat, and 20% carb to help better stabilize their blood sugars. Um, yeah, okay. It wasn't about losing weight. It was only about feeling better. You know what? I, ha I don't have much to say, but then at the same time, I have a lot to say because I think as a society, we are very much not educated on what proper good nutrition is. I agree with you. I mean, unless you do your own uh, research, unless you talk to some, a nutritionist or a dietitian um, or someone in the know, there is just no way. And, and that in itself is really dangerous when you allow, when you allow when people go online because there's all of these fad diets like the keto diet and, and raw diets, Well, let's stay away from the diet. Let's just do the, uh, isn't there? Well, I guess, a, you know what? The food guides, guys, start that's what I there. Remember, we did an episode. Um, um, maybe food, I'll yeah. link it because Canada revised their food guide. And it's like they did reverse that pyramid. Like fruit, plant-based, fruit and veggies are number one. And then your whole grains and your beans and your legumes. And then after that, it's the dairy and the meat, mm -hmm. right? But it's primarily your fruits, veggies. Oh, you know what? Um, I will recommend the Blue Zone diet. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I, I find that it's really flexible and beautiful. Yeah. He even recommends chocolate. So 
Yeah, th that that's a thumbs up in my book, right? <laughs> but just like getting back to proper fuel for the body. Yeah. I, and you know what and most of us do? Uh, we might have, uh, most people eat protein, lots of protein. Right. Uh, I think we're, we're really low on our vegetables and our fruits. I think that's what we And our fat. And because our, fat our Western culture, because of the whole marketing and advertising and the whole diet industry, we really got manipulated and screwed over about the whole idea of fat. fat yeah, because we think any little fat is going to add 10 and pounds carbs, to it. Yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's in moderation. I mean, when they're talking about fat, they don't say eat a pound of fat. No, um, no, no, but, know. you know, like healthy fats are good. Your butters, your oils, your nuts, your avocados, your, your dairy, like these are good things. Your yes. fatty fishes, these are good things. And it's either good vitamins and minerals in for absolutely. Okay, okay next and, and supplement strategically. strategically. Well, I'm not consistent, but the the two things that I have been trying to take over the winter and the pandemic is my omega three in cod liver oil, right? Which I love. I love too. I That's get right. that from you. Like it's like yeah, it tastes like fish. I mean, mm -hmm. what did you expect? It's from cod liver. So cod liver oil and vitamin D. That's kind of what I take. That's about, that's about all you need. Uh, um, I don't take the vitamin D. I was tested the vitamin D two years ago, and I'm just perfect. I know you are I'm outside perfect. all the time, and I eat a lot, a lot of uh, fish anyway. Yes. And so um, I do have a protein powder, and it's not something that I take regularly. Um, I take it, so I do the weight training with you twice a week and the walk once a week. So I take my protein powder three times a week um, because I do want to have something in my system, but I'm not a super early riser, so it's something that's quick yes. and easily digestible for me. So that's when I take it. I, I started taking it because when I get up in the morning, I do my runs. Right. I don't eat any anything, you know, and I found that if I don't put anything in my system, I'm kind of sluggish. Yeah, it's for tough. sure. So I drink that uh, protein shake, and I see that helps me a little bit. So that's the times that I do it, right. three times a week too. And you know, there are specialized supplement ex extracts called adaptogens that if indeed you are struggling with chronic fatigue and, and, and chronic stress and cortisol, um, like ashwagandha, you can get in the forms of gummies and powders and pills. Oh, you did not know you could. And teas, yeah. Remember we were on that binge for a while of those gummies that I got? Oh, right. That was ashwagandha. Oh, was it? Yeah. Which is known as like an adaptogenitive, like energy type herb but it's an adaptogen which means it's going to help support your system in the way that it needs to so if it needs to kind of reduce the cortisol and kind of bring you down a bit then it will so explore those adaptogens because i think they they can be really helpful yeah um cut out caffeine i i'm not sure how i feel about this one well, I think when it says cut out caffeine, it means don't drink the whole pot of coffee. Well, you know, or caffeine, and, and you know, that's the thing that I am so grateful that I get from you because sometimes I can get a little extreme and I'll say things like, "Oh, maybe I'm doing this too much or this too much," and then you get me to actually focus uh, properly. It's like Pam, when you read these articles, you're probably talking about people who consume four plus cups of Tim Hortons coffee with milk and sugar every day. I consume a maximum of two cups of coffee a day. I have the one in the morning, and I after that, if I do, I it's usually two. Yeah. So, you know, you have to gauge that for yourself. I have never gotten shakes or any kind of um, uncomfortable, energetic jolts from caffeine. Neither have I. Um, I think my body metabolizes it fairly well, and... I can but even with the two cups, Pam, you I don't know. have to worry. It's people. No. I have known people that drink coffee steady all day long, yes. all day long yeah. at work. That coffee cup is with them. Yeah. And number seven is purpose, purpose, purposefully manage your stress levels. Now, what the heck does that mean? Um, uh, take time for yourself. Meditation, meditation. yoga, uh, something to relax yourself. Yeah. So you have to plan that into your daily life you do yeah you absolutely do i even find myself uh i need that you need some time yourself time myself time time yeah. to peace 
yeah. need to be quiet and just to be time. Yeah. Like, you know, you choose a day or what have you where it's like, you know what, I just want to be alone. I need to spend some time outside. And... But you know, it is, and it's, it's a daily thing. And I, they don't mean to say half a day, eight hours. I mean, it's anywhere from sure, 15 right. minutes or however. Right. So, so, so 10, start with 10 minutes. That's start true. Even, so just, just either to uh, relax or yourself. Yeah, no, um, and most of us do. We ignore that, don't we? We just keep going, 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 going. Well, not me necessarily. No, we may, maybe not us necessarily, but uh, people maybe do. you once upon a time. Maybe yeah, once upon a time. But I think now I'm a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. yeah. So everything works good for me. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Jakey. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. I'd like to have a discussion with our trainer because I'm now getting phantom pains in my arm and. And I'm wondering if maybe I need to slow down a little bit. Oh, yes, we could have a discussion. About no, that. not to decrease the amount of time I'm exercising, but the certain exercises Exercise. and the weights and the reps, and et cetera. So, yeah, no, I think it, I think regardless if you feel that you have um, you have dysfunctional adrenals or you're dealing with chronic stress, I think this is still a really good exercise to maybe go through every quarter. Like if you live where we live, where we have the four seasons, hey, you know, you know now I'm just talking out loud. Yes. Because I think every season requires something differently. It, it does. Right? And I think you have to sit down and sort of uh, take a look at your at yourself yeah, and uh, see what you have to change yeah. or adjust. A self, or, a self assessment, right? Okay, very good, Pam, yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Do I get a gold star? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I, I like that. So, you know, not unlike how you would run a business, Absolutely. You know, no. you know your Q1, 2, 3, and 4. Yes. Do that for your body, mind, and soul, and do a seasonal, quarterly check-in. Adjust your routines and your schedules. And, yeah. Just be aware of this. Yeah, self-check-in. You know, be monitor. aware. And then, like you said, quarterly, and then drop in. Yeah. What's wrong? What's exactly. not working? There you exactly. go. That's it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming out, JP. This was really You're great. welcome. Yes, it's very nice, Pamela. <laughs> All right, until next time. To Lou. On behalf of Janet and I, we want to thank you for listening to this episode and supporting our podcast. It is such a treat for us to share with you our passion for health and living. If you have any questions or a topic that you would like us to talk about, then please feel free to connect with us at ph at pamelaheichel.com. Remember to meet us in this space every second Wednesday. Much love and peace.